afternoon. My wife and I were camped out here at uh, Red Hollow, at Land Between the Lakes. Uh, we just got here this after earlier this afternoon. We're trying to salvage what's left of a uh, otherwise bad vacation. We had a, a cabin rented up in the Smokies, and uh, by the time we got there, they closed everything down for the Irma storm. So we rode out about two days there, and just decided to come back home with uh, with all the rain and stuff um, and everything being closed. So uh, today is the first decent weather day we've had since uh, since all that, and uh, we're going to finish out our vacation here. Lay between the lakes. Um, tonight I'm going to make a, uh, a Hungarian uh, goulash. I'm going to do that in uh, my my 10 inch Dutch oven. And uh, give me a couple minutes. Uh, I'm going to get some coal started and uh, um, get this going. It's going to be our our meal for tonight. Should be fairly simple. Um, so give me just a couple minutes to get myself set up and. Uh, We'll get to doing this. Okay, I just wanted to take a quick minute to uh, explain this recipe. It's one I found from uh, Betty Crocker's website. I was looking up some stuff to do with Bisquick. And uh, so that's what I got here. I've got uh, some Bisquick, um, some dry chives. A few other little spices, some salt and pepper, uh, some powdered milk, and it's uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to make a, some dumplings later on when this uh, goulash is about done. Also, I took uh, some some key elements out of another traditional goulash recipe I found, and then mixed it with this one. So this particular one's uh, kind of a hodgepodge of two different recipes. But I've got uh, I've got some sirloin steak that I'm going to cube cube up and then uh, fry in some rendered down uh, bacon grease um, and after that I've got uh, one carrot one potato I'm going to use half of this onion uh, or at least I think I am I might use the whole thing it's an awful lot though and then the garlic and some uh, some red bell pepper um, also uh, some tomato paste some stewed tomatoes and some beef broth, and then uh, as far as seasoning goes, it's uh, got quite a bit of paprika, uh, some caraway seed, and some marjoram. So that's uh, um, that's everything for for this. It's going to take about uh, two two and a half hours to cook, and then if you give me uh, just a couple minutes, I'll get some charcoal started. Um, and I'm going to do all my prep work and stuff for with the vegetables, and uh, I'll get back with you when I'm ready to start frying the meat. Okay, I've got uh, I've got 16 coals underneath my oven here, and uh, um, I don't think you're going to be able to see it from the camera angle. I got a little bit of canola oil in the bottom of that. I know, <coughs> excuse me, I know. Uh, I know earlier I said I was going to fry it up in the bacon, and I miss, miss said that. Um, the meat's going to get fried up in the canola oil. I am going to use the bacon, but that's to fry up the vegetables and stuff afterwards. So uh, I've got... i got my, uh, my sirloin meat. I cubed it up in uh, little, little small cubes and seasoned it with a little Montreal steak seasoning. And I'm going to... Excuse me, sorry, I'm all in the camera this time. I'm going to go ahead and fry this up a little bit, just to brown it. And, uh, give it another little sprinkle of... Uh, Montreal. I'm going to let that fry up for just a few minutes and uh, just to brown the, the sides and stuff and then uh, start frying up the, uh, the vegetables and then we'll put it together as a stew. 
Okay, I'm going to give this one more stir and let that get the other side of them for just a few minutes. It's been frying up probably, I don't know, five minutes or so, long enough to long enough to dice up a bell pepper, however long that takes, on a, a very small cutting board. But uh, I'm just going to let a couple of these other, these pink sides here, brown up just a little bit and... Uh, Then uh, fry up the bacon and then the vegetables and get right back with you. Okay, I think that's uh, I think that's about got it. I'm gonna oh, set that there for a minute. I'm gonna pull these off real quick. Set them down in the lid. And then uh, add the bacon to the pan, let it render down. Probably pull off some of this water from the beef. Let me drain this off real quick. Drain off completely. I left a little bit of liquid in there. Get the bacon put in here real quick, and when that renders down, we'll uh, add the onions and the garlic and the bell pepper. Alright, so let's give that a couple minutes to uh, to fry down and uh, get right back with you. Let's be sitting here cooking up oh, dinner. Carol, this is perfect. Okay, that's uh, my bacon is just about fried up, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add the onions. Um, let them cook up a little bit and once they get close to being done I'll add the garlic and the peppers and then I've got to start some new, some new coals because I don't think uh, I don't think there's much life left in these coals here so I want that fry just a couple minutes and uh, soften the onions up uh, add the garlic and pepper, and then the paprika. Oh, sounds like my wife's back. Uh, 
sent her off a little bit ago on a she wanted to kayak around the bay so sounds like she's coming back so I'll get back with you in just a minute alrighty I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, the garlic and then the uh, the peppers in there give them a give them a little s small fry and then uh, add the paprika and then start some new coals Can you smell it? That looks really good. It smells mm. wonderful. Alrighty, let that cook up for a few minutes, probably not much more than five, and uh, carry it back to it. Okay, I went ahead and added the uh, the paprika to it off camera, um, and I'm just letting that sauté in the bacon grease and onions and stuff for a couple minutes just to to cook up just a little bit, and then I'm going to go ahead and and add the meat back to it. Set that there for a second and uh, add the remainder ingredients. Set it off to the side and start some more coals because those are really spent. So what I've got here is a, a little I think you can see anyhow a little two tablespoon package of uh, uh, tomato paste and I only need half of it so I'm gonna go ahead and add that half to it sure what to do with the other half of it but we'll figure it out and then uh, my uh, beef beef broth and my tomatoes once I figure out what I do with the can opener So there's the tomatoes. And uh, the beef broth. Give that a good stir together. That is going to be so good. So, I'm going to set this on top of it and set it all off to the side. My coals are about spent. I have a, I forgot to bring my charcoal chimney with me, so I'm going to have to start another set of coals from here. I'm probably going to, you know, let us. Put what little is left on there just to keep that to some form of warmth. And uh,
Okay, it's been simmering along rather nicely for a while. I'm, uh, I'll go ahead and add my potatoes to it. I got my lid lifter too, of course. So. Oh yeah, that's sure. It's a shame you can't smell this. That smells really, really good. Yeah, it's looking really nice. All right. Go ahead and add. The Add my potatoes to it. I cut them fairly small too, so it wouldn't take as long for them to cook. And I'm going to let them go about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes, and then. Uh, Add the dumplings to it, and then it should be should be about a meal after that. Look at that! Look at that red color. That's really nice. Looking forward to this meal. Okay, here we go. Okay, and then for this last little bit here, I've got my, uh, uh, oh, there it is. Okay, I've got my, uh, my dumpling mix, and then for the liquid part of it, I'm just going to use some, uh, just regular old sour cream. I went ahead and got the sour cream white, but um, I don't think it really matters. I'm going to put about a, a third of this container in there. And then mix that up. So I'm going to put about a, about a third of this container in there. Get all that mixed up. Here, Ruth, can you put this back in the cooler? Get all this dry mixed up in there. Sounds like a barge coming through. I don't think it is. It could be a houseboat. Yeah, because when I looked that other time, there was just a boat. Well, really?
looks almost doughy. I'm going to wait about five minutes or so before putting that on. Um, but it's, it's pretty much it. It was pretty pretty simple. So uh, like I said, I'm going to wait about five minutes, put that on, and then uh, should be eating real soon. That redness, oh man, that is. Yeah, that's gonna be really, really good. All right. And put these dumplings in there. much out of it as I can anyhow. Yeah. I can't see getting any more out of that. That's about it. So put the lid back on and let that uh, let that cook up probably 10 minutes and we'll check. Alrighty, so let's check in on everything. It should be done, or at least I'm hoping it is. Um, I went ahead and put the remainder of the bottom coals up on top just to help with the dumplings. The stew is pretty much really done. So, got a lot of ash up here too, so that's acting as an insulator more than it's a it's more hurting me more than it's helping me, but let's see here. I I think I'm going to call that a meal. So, let me, uh, let's see here. Kind of spoon it, it's not slotted. Yeah, perfect. So, I'm going to move this dumpling off to the side. Dumping on there. Oh, it's getting hot. And one more thing. I'm going to set this here for just a quick second.
little dollop of the sour cream. No? You don't want sour cream, Ruth? I'm not a big fan of sour cream. Oh, okay. You can put it on yours. Okay, never mind. Oh, put it on your head. So. That is all that, and uh, it's our dinner for tonight, so thank you for spending the evening in camp with us, and uh, until next time, we'll see you in the woods. There you go, Ruth.